In Indian astronomy, the North Star is identified as Dhruva. The significance of Dhruva Tara is that it never moves from its position and always remains fixed in its place. But do you know the mythological story of Dhruva which earned him his position in the sky? The first man that emerged from Brahma was called Swayambhu Manu and his wife was Shatarupa. Manu had two sons, Priyavarta and Uttanapada. Uttanapada had two wives, Suruchi and Suniti. Suruchi had a son, Uttam, while Suniti had also a son, Dhruva. The king loved Suruchi more than he loved Suniti. One day the king was sitting on the throne. Prince Uttam was playing in his lap. Meanwhile, Dhruva also arrived there and insisted to play in the lap of his father. At his insistence, Queen Suruchi ridiculed that as Dhruva was not born to her, he had no right to the king's love. So his insistence is useless. Though you are also son of this king, his throne belongs to my son. Don't you know that you have been born to Suniti? Getting angry over his stepmother's ridicule, Dhruva went to his mother. Suniti consoled her son and inquired about the reason for his anger. Dhruva narrated the whole thing to his mother. Suniti too got perplexed and said, O oh son, Suruchi speaks the truth. But don't you worry my child, for no one can do away the virtues of your deeds that you performed in your previous birth. Hence you should not feel sorry for such petty things. If you feel sorry by the words of your stepmother, why don't you try to gather virtues? Why don't you try to be a gentle and altruistic person? Thus consoled by his mother, Dhruva said, Mother, from now onwards, I will do every such thing that I may attain the most respected position in the world. I am no longer desirous of getting a position granted by others. I will achieve the same position as my father has. Saying this, Dhruva left the palace and the town and reached a dense forest. Seven rishis were already present in the forest. Dhruva greeted them all and said very politely, I am Prince Dhruva. King Uttanapad is my father and his younger queen Suniti is my mother. I have arrived here out of desperation. The sages said, You are but a boy. You have no reason to be worried because your father is still alive and neither you have any disease. What has then caused you to such severe desperation, young man? Dhruva narrated the whole event and how his stepmother Suruchi ridiculed his inferior position in the palace. The sages felt pity for Dhruva and decided to help him in his cause. What do you desire, child? asked the sages. I neither long for wealth or for the kingdom. I simply long to enjoy my position that nobody has ever enjoyed earlier, said Dhruva humbly. Prince Dhruva, nobody can attain such an unparalleled position without the worship of Govind. So if you wish to attain such a position, you should worship the Supreme Being, Lord Vishnu, said Pulastya. Only he who is far above the tangible can only satisfy him and bring you that supreme position, spoke Atri. Our blessings are with you, lad. Go and worship Govind, who holds the entire universe within him. Even the wretched people attain the rare salvation worshipping the supreme being said the sages collectively. Prince Dhruva greeted the sages and continued on his journey. At last, he reached a beautiful forest, Madhuvan, on the bank of the river Yamuna. As per the dictate of the sages, he began to recite the mantra continuously. Very soon, the earth began to move because of Dhruva's severe penance. Even the seat of Indra could not remain stable. A stampede resulted among the gods. The gods then hatched a conspiracy to disturb the penance. According to the plan, an illusionary image of Suniti, Dhruva's mother, appeared before him and pleaded, O oh son, please stop this severe penance that is bound to decay your body. I got you after great desires and worship. It is not proper for you to take your stepmother's words so seriously and desert your real mother. You are my only support. You are only four or five years old. Presently, you should pay more attention to your plays and studies. Why are you observing such a severe penance then? O oh son, if you don't give up your penance right now, I will give my life. But Dhruva was so much sunk in the contemplation of Lord Vishnu that he did not hear the wailing of his mother. Thus seeing all their attempts failed, the gods decided to take refuge to Lord Vishnu. There they said, O oh Lord, we have come to you perplexed by the severe penance of Dhruva, the son of Uttanapada. 
His penance is increasing like a waxing moon. We are not sure if he desires the position of Indra, Surya, Kuber, Varun or other deity. But kindly remove our fears. Assuring the gods, the Lord said, that boy has no desire for attaining the position of any deity. But I will grant him whatever he desires. But all of you need not worry. The gods greeted the Lord and returned. It is said that Dhruva undertook penance for almost 3000 years. Ultimately pleased by the severe penance of Dhruva, Lord Vishnu appeared before him in his formal four-armed form and said, Dhruva, may it all be well for you. I am very much pleased with you. Hearing these words, Dhruva opened his eyes and to his amazement found Lord Vishnu standing before him. For a moment, he did not believe his eyes. Standing before him was the same Lord Vishnu whom he used to see in contemplation. For a moment, Dhruva forgot how to pray to God. He then took refuge of God and said, My mind is exhilarated with devotion to you. It wishes to pray to you. Hearing these words, the Lord touched Dhruva with his conch. And as soon as it happened, an unbinding stream of devotional prayer sprang from Dhruva's mouth. I started this severe penance out of desperation caused by harsh words by my stepmother. She had ridiculed my insistence of playing in my father's lap, saying that as I was not born to her, I had no right to the king's love. Hence, O oh Lord, I wish to attain such a position that could be the base of the entire universe, prayed Dhruva. Lord Vishnu the Benevolent, impressed by Dhruva's penance, granted him his blessings. I will accord you the position that is excellent among all the three worlds. In the future, you will be the base of all the planets and all the constellations. I grant you a fixed position that is far above the sun, the moon, the planets, the constellations, Saptarishis and all the gods. People will see you with faith, for you will show them the right direction, blessed Lord Vishnu. And since then, Dhruva was placed at a fixed position in the universe from which nobody could move him. In the Vedic star lore, the star named Polaris in Ursa Minor is identified as Prince Dhruva. North star or Polaris or Dhruva remains roughly fixed in the sky and all the other constellations appear to move around Dhruva from east to west. The Saptarishis who guided Dhruva are also seen in the vicinity in the asterism of Big Dipper in Ursa Major. Thus. The story of Dhruva not only talks about the comparatively stagnant position of the North Star but also talks about the circumpolar motion of the stars around Dhruva. Every tale of ancient India had a deeper understanding. Along with moral and ethical, sometimes even astronomical facts were conveyed via stories that would be easier to remember. If you like this story then follow our page Satyalok on Instagram and help us to spread the greatness of ancient Indian culture with as many people as we can. Stay tuned, stay educated and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Panthana Sandhu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.